uh, one of the things which is the Constitution. Uh, seven years into his presidency, uh, Barack Obama has made clear that he has no respect for our founding document in the United States of America. Although President Obama doesn't hesitate to remind us that he is a constitutional scholar, he has time and time again bypassed the lawmaking body of our government and chosen not to enforce laws that are already on the books. His actions, and frankly his inactions, either demonstrate his ignorance or his intentional dishonesty with the American people. I like your second idea. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we saw the most obvious example of this president's immense power grab. President Obama's gun control executive order would not have stopped any of the horrible tragedies that he so shamelessly uses to promote his anti-gun agenda. Before we learned that the shooting in San Bernardino was inspired by ISIS, President Obama used the attack as part of his anti-gun rhetoric. Barack Obama also cited the July attack on the military center in Chattanooga and the 2009 attack, which we all remember, at Fort Hood, right here in our district, District 25. All the perpetrators of these horrific acts were Islamic extremists. I repeat, Islamic extremists. Apparently, the constitutional scholar in the White House does not understand that or can't say that. He thinks our nation's gun laws are totally to blame. So forget California's or Chicago's arguably unconstitutional restrictions on gun purchases. Let me tell you, if it worked, we wouldn't have the problems up there. If our liberal academic president had his way, he would gut the Second Amendment totally by himself. And he's talking about it today. Hmm. It has been six years since Nadal Hassan murdered 13 of his fellow soldiers and injured 30 more on base here in Central Texas, Fort Hood, and our president still refuses to acknowledge the real enemy that is threatening the safety of the homeland, radical Islamic extremism. I can tell you firsthand the outrageous lengths I had to go through to get Obama and his administration to change his classification, classification of the attack on Fort Hood from workplace violence to an act of terrorism. Now, was there anybody in America, Judge, the thought that what happened on November 9, 2000, or November 5, 2009, was workplace violence. I had some of the soldiers up to see me in Washington that were there, and one of them said that the president could only smell blood and gunpowder. He would realize that it was not workplace violence. But we got that fixed. The American people deserve a president who respects their constitutional rights. We deserve a president who isn't afraid to admit that radical Islam is the real threat to America. And we also deserve a president who goes after the real cause of violence, not a president that use, uses national tragedies to push the agenda he has had since day one in office. The Constitution is the foundation of our government. And I, as your congressperson, will not sit back and let the president pick and choose which parts he thinks he should uphold. President Obama must go by the Constitution, not go around the Constitution. And I certainly will not let him prevent law-abiding citizens, like all of us here, from practicing one of our most important rights. Ultimately, the Obama administration will have to come to Congress to get funding for its proposals. You're going to have a hard time. I can promise you I will do all in my power as one person, as your person, to keep this executive branch in check during this final year he has in office. So I want to say it's great to be back home in Texas. It's always great to come here in Marble Falls. And I want to say, may God bless all of you. May God always bless America. May God continue to bless Texas. Hmm. And remind all of you, I personally believe the most important amendment is the Second Amendment. Thank, Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Yes. Is it hard? <laughs>